Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Spring Joy Bouquet Stamps and Dies. Um, I super love this image, but I wanted to use it a little bit differently. So originally, when I came up with my game plan, it was like my go-to scene. I was going to maybe put it in a vase or a canister. Um, and then I just really couldn't make that work the way that I wanted it to. And a lot of my teammates who are just endlessly talented and wonderful have used it and have used the full bouquet. And so I would just wanted to do something different. So I have this stamp, this image, three different ways on three different cards so that you can see whether you have this particular stamp set or another stamp set that has a bouquet in it that you don't have to use it the same way every time that you can get more mileage out of your stamps you guys know i'm a big fan of this so first way that i'm going to do this is i am going to frame it so i have if you actually saw me use my misty lid um peanut in math they were uh learning measurements how to you know measure things and he accidentally now in his defense my ruler was already cracked but he did break it uh and i just haven't replaced it yet so I needed something to draw a straight line and that it was clear and it worked. I used my misty lid door. So I also, you saw me mask off the corner and that's just so that I can keep it in my framed square. Um, and then just using those same masks that are already in place, I am going to go over those lines um, with a alcohol safe pen. Uh, that way, you know, none of my coloring will smear it or anything like that. And then I'm going to have this cute little framed in piece. Um, another way you could do this, if you don't want to do the framing in, would be to stamp the bouquet in the top right hand corner um, or the bottom left hand corner or both of them will give you a nice arrangement to put a sentiment in the middle. Um, so I also wanted to add a little bit of color to the background. You guys know blue is my boyfriend. I love the color blue, feel like that's a total neutral. So I'm just going to use Salty Ocean um, to add a little bit of color. I did put the masks back in place for this just to keep the color contained to my frame and then I'm going to use the same salty ocean for all of the backgrounds of the cards I'm just not going to show that to you um because you just saw me do it right right so for the other um oh and don't forget to erase your pencil lines for when you drew your square to begin with I almost forgot to do it um which would kind of be a bummer in a clean and simple card to just be able to see those pencil lines hanging out and again, just let me reiterate that this will work with any bouquet stamps that you have. So here I went ahead and put down um, my card. Now I have it all the way over to the left of my Misty to make sure that I have enough room um, for my stamp to kind of hang over. And then I'm just going to stamp the flower portion of it. Um, I didn't even really include the stems too much um, just because I just wanted the flowers. Now, once I have that stamped down, you can see here I have like a mini mask, <laughs> like just a little quarter of a mask, um, because I only need to mask this side of it in order to stamp the bouquet again. And it almost covers the entire um, like bottom side of the card, the length of the card. That's the word I want, length. Uh, but I don't have it positioned properly in my Misty because the stem portion is catching the hinge of my Misty. So I need to scoot it. This is only slightly more difficult for me because I put the temporary adhesive down on my foam pad, but that's just something I do because I stamp a lot of larger backgrounds. Um, but anyway, so now once I scoot it up, we're totally good to go. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stamp it. And then for the last little corner, uh, I'm gonna move the cardstock down and just remask you know, that one little side again. And you would think because you're just continually stamping them right on top of each other, it would be super noticeable that you had like a repeat pattern. But because there's so many flowers going on in here, um, it really is not noticeable. Now I chose to make this a landscape card, but you could certainly um, put this in the, the traditional portrait style and just have a floral border on your right or left hand side and that would work as well and be really, really pretty. The other thing that I did besides stamping these in three different designs 
I also colored them in three different ways. Um, that's why this, I mean, it's only probably about five or six minutes longer than a regular video of mine, um, but it is just a smidge longer. So for this one, I'm going to be using this um, post-it note masking tape just because it comes in a roll and it already has a straight edge, so that makes it a lot easier for me. When I put this stamp down, first of all, I didn't clean my stamp because I'm lazy, but if you want to make sure you don't have any stray marks on your card, definitely do that. Definitely clean your stamps. Um, but you do want to pay attention to um, where your placement is that you have enough room on the top and bottom for your image. So I could have, like when you look at the bouquet, you can see that one side is taller than the other. This gives this particular design a little bit of a diagonal look, which I did not mind. But if you do, then just tilt it. Just tilt it so your flowers are a little bit straighter and you won't have that um, diagonal look to your design. So once I get the stamp down once, I'm going to remove this masking tape and then I'm going to line it up exactly with the edge of the bottom one. Now, yes, it means they're going to go right up against each other, but the sentiment is going to go in the middle so you won't actually see that stamped portion there. Um, it'll just be hidden behind your sentiment. Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't look too terrible with them like right up against each other. I just, you know, my, I guess my natural inclination is to make it look like one image and to make it look like one image, I need to put the sentiment in there to hide it. Um, so, but then that's that, that's the three images. Like I told you, I did the um, salty ocean background for all of them. I just didn't show that to you. And then per Kelly usual, I'm going to do a little bit of um, clean water spattered in the background. Now for my framed one, you can see I've masked off all the sides. Um, and at the top one, I'm actually using my landscape card to further mask off that top portion uh, without having to have to get another piece of tape. But so I did clean water first, spattered on there. And then I'm also going to use Perfect Pearls just because I like the look of it. I use Perfect Pearls in the color Perfect Pearls, which is the clear white iridescent one, but you could certainly use anything you wanted or if you have metallic watercolors that will also work for this. Um, it doesn't have to be Perfect Pearls, it's just the cheapest option that I have found that lasts the longest. So anywho, that's what I did here. Once this is dry, I'm going to move on to the coloring. Um, I did them kind of back. <laughs> I did them a little bit backwards, y'all. I didn't mean to. It's just kind of how it happened. So for this card, I am going to do a layer of marker. This is not necessary for coloring with colored pencils. It just helps me visually, like, color block what needs to be what. Um, the only one that really it was very beneficial to was the daffodils because I was leaving them white with a yellow center. So I did do a little bit of shading. First I went in with the C1 and I thought that would be sufficient. Um, and then I went in there with a C3. Now is that basically the same shading that's on the one I did with the markers? Yes. Yes it is. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but that's just me. I have a hard time not doing full dimension and I was very nervous because the Prismacolor um, pack, like I own them all. I have the big set, but I was trying to keep it limited to just the 24 set that I picked up at Target. This is the one I take to work with me. Um, you know, it's just, it's not all the colors. I just kind of make it work to make more colors than I have, but that's really the joy of, you know, craft supplies. So here I'm just, like I said, filling them in and then I'm going to do the colored pencils right over top of them. I know a lot of you prefer to color with colored pencils versus markers. Um, I love the result of them. I think colored pencils are beautiful, but I just prefer markers. Like I'm just more comfortable with markers. I feel like I get better dimension with markers. But if you love colored pencils or you love watercolors or you love whatever, like you can color this however you would normally color it or however you're comfortable coloring it. All right, so as far as life has been going, um, still a lot of allergies going on as we head into springtime. 
um, which I am hoping to talk to my doctor about and see what I can change up or switch up or whatever um, just to see what they have to say in the hopes <laughs> that I can live my life and not be miserable all the time. Today isn't too bad. Um, it's a beautiful day out. It's like 70 here. Uh, but don't worry, it's going to be 34 tomorrow. Thank you, spring in Ohio. Um, but pretty much every time I go outside, like I was outside talking to my mom. Um, I was outside when Peanut was swinging on a swing set. Like pretty much any time I'm outside, I'm just sneezing. <laughs> just sneezing. And I do have to work tonight. Uh, so that's going to be super fun. Uh, hopefully I can make it from the car to the building. And then that will help mitigate any of my allergy symptoms. But probably not. Let's be real. Um, here's where I'm going back in and adding in that C3 just because I can't leave well enough alone. Yeah, that's a problem I have with dimension. I know that. And you're going to see it on the, um, the horizontal card where I did like the landscape. It was hard for me to just leave it. Uh, yeah. But anywho, so, so the allergies I'm hoping to have worked on, um, it is a really nice day today. We, um, my mom had actually called and my family's a bowling family. That's just, they've always, I'm the only one who doesn't bowl. Both my sisters bowl league with my mom. My dad bowls league on when, no, Mondays. My mom bowls league. It used to be Wednesdays and now it's Tuesdays. And then they would both bowl on a Saturday league. Well, part of the reason that my dad ended up having his hip replacement is because he got to the point where he couldn't even bowl anymore. Which, for those of you who asked in the last video how he's doing, he is doing really well. He uh, is to the point where he can drive himself. Um, Eric took him for a spin to make sure that he was all good there. He can get in and out with his cane to get his walker if he needs his walker. Though I think he's mostly just using the cane now. But anyway, um, still doing his physical therapy. He isn't quite sleeping in bed yet. I think that's more of a mental thing, honestly. He did try to go up and sleep in bed the one night, and he said that he fell asleep for two hours, then he woke up, then he couldn't get back to sleep, he couldn't get comfortable, he laid there for hours upon hours upon hours, before eventually he just gave up and went downstairs and slept in the recliner again. And now he hasn't tried since. So I think it's just in his head that one night was like such a non... Like, it was just no good. Like, it was just not a good experience that, like, he has it stuck in his head that he can't sleep in bed. But, anywho. Um, so, he has been doing really very well with that. He was a little behind on physical therapy. Um, but I don't know if that's because they kept him in the hospital the extra few days or if because he's maybe not doing the exercises as... I know he's doing them, but maybe he's supposed to do them three times a day and he's only doing them two because he gets tired. I'm not really sure. Um, and he's not really going to own it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to, I got to get that info from my mom. So, um, but anywho, my, my mom did take Nathan today. He's on spring break. Um, and she had called to take him on Sunday to go bowling. And we had already made plans with my best friend and her daughter, um, to come over on Sunday so the only other day they had open bowling was today. So they did go do that. He had a very good time. Um, said something about maybe wanting to do a summer bowling league, which my child doesn't ever want to do anything. He's like, are you an organized recreational activity of some sort? No, thank you. Um, that's just, <laughs> and I can't even blame him because I didn't either. Like I was never, like when I was little and my mom would put me in things, like she would put me in ballet or... Um, gym, no, did we even do gymnastics as a kid? I don't remember. I remember ballet. But she can confirm or deny whether or not I was in gymnastics. But, like, we did those things. But, like, I didn't want to do that stuff either when I was a kid. Not saying it's not important. Not saying that it doesn't build character and, you know, being a team player and all that jazz. It does. Um, but he doesn't want to do it. So, apparently, today he did mention to her something about maybe bowling on a league and they do have summer leagues, so I will have to look into that and see maybe if it's something he legitimately wants to do. If you remember a couple of years ago, we had him in lacrosse because he said he seemed to be interested in that, but then after doing that for one year, he was like, no, thank you. 
Like, he did it. He participated. But then he didn't want to go. <laughs> he didn't want to go back again. But I'm more of a homebody and kind of a loner myself. Um, so I feel him on a very real level. Um, and not wanting to participate in group activities. Which is probably why my particular group activity is solo. And I just share on the internet where I don't actually have to go anywhere or get out of my pajamas. See what I'm saying? Um, so they did that, which was super nice. And then he has started swim lessons. So we originally had intended on putting him in swim lessons last year. Well, it was really honestly the year before that. But then I didn't realize that they started scheduling swim lessons in like February. Like, who, why? But they do. I don't understand. We live in Ohio. Um, so we missed, like, there wasn't any spots left. Then last year, obviously, COVID. So this year, we got him into swim lessons. And he had his first one. He didn't really love it. Uh, I had a little bit of a mama bear moment. Because... <sighs> uh, he, so basically the way that it was explained to me when I signed him up for these particular lessons is that it's uh, one teacher per four kids, uh, which I really liked because it was a small class size. And like he would come in, he would, he wears a swimsuit underneath his clothes. He kind of ditches his t-shirt and shorts, um, you know, puts them in the little bag with his towel and stuff. He goes in, does his swim lessons and then you kind of scoop him up at the end uh, with his towel and stuff, walk him over to the showers, they rinse off, and then you go to a changing room. But since it was our first day, she said, just wait, they'll call him, you know, they'll call the 430 class, and they'll, you know, they'll call him and then take him over. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. So I knew he was in lane six because they had told me at the door and then nobody specifically called him nobody there was no guidance whatsoever it was just like they called the 430 class and that was that so he walks in and he is extraordinarily shy my child unless he is comfortable um again I don't blame him I don't like feeling like a bunch of people are looking at me I don't I don't like any of that and I mean, even, <laughs> even when people are supposed to be looking at you, like, you know, when you're getting married and you're the, the one coming down the aisle and everybody's supposed to be looking at you, like even then, I'm like, really, just, just look away. Just, just, just look at the front. Nothing to see here. Um, so he kind of walks in and I told him, you know, you're in lane six and of course they have every other lane labeled. So five is labeled and seven is labeled, but six isn't because why would six be labeled back to the card super quick so here i have done a combination of blues and greens for my teal leaves because i don't have a teal in this 24 pack however if you are mixing multiple colors and you're having a hard time getting them to be solid try going over it with a white yes it will lighten it a little bit but it will also do wonders to kind of blend those colors which is amazing. One of the things that I don't love about colored pencils is once you color the pencil, because of that wax that sits on top, you cannot go back in with your markers or you can't go back in with a pen because it just clogs the tip. So if you want to outline your images, as you all know I love to do, I have to do it with a black colored pencil which means I'm pretty much continually sharpening this pencil to have a sharp enough point to outline anything. But nonetheless, this is this completed coloring piece. The next one we're gonna do is going to be my more traditional marker shading. So this is gonna be a full shading. I think for most of the colors, um, I used three instead of four, um, just cause I felt like I didn't really need the full three, I wanted the colors to be somewhat similar when I was photographing my cards because you know I'm kind of weird like that. Um, but for the yellows, I did use four just because uh, I really need that E99 to give it some depth. So anywho, back to the 
swim lessons. So nobody comes out. Like he said, I send him in there. He's trying to figure out where lane six is. I can see him starting to get upset. And I'm like, nah, fam, the same for us. So I just walk up in the pool. Like I'm the only parent in there. I don't really care. And I take him by the hand and I walk him over to lane six and sit him down and tell him, you know, just wait for your teacher or whatever. Um, and so it ended up being fine. But like, I was just like, why is there no organization? Like you said the thing was going to happen and then the thing didn't happen. So I was a little bit frustrated. So then the second one we went to, now we've only been to two. The second one we went to, he was substantially more comfortable um, just because he had been through it one time before and he knew what lane to, you know, what lane to go to and what his te- who his teacher was and all that. So I will tell you, I had a proud mama moment during his swim lesson. The swim lessons are only 30 minutes long. But during his swim lesson, his goggles broke. Now, there it wasn't that they broke broke, okay? The part of the, like the part that wraps around your head actually just came out of the plastic piece on the side of the goggles. So I see it happen. I see them break, like the piece come out. And I'm like, oh man, but he's only got 10 minutes left. So I'm like, hopefully... He can make it through. I watch him try to fix them. And I am like so super proud of him for trying to just fix the problem. He cannot get, because he doesn't understand that once you pull like the rubber portion of it through, you have to feed it back through the little plastic loop that is the tightener. So he's pulling it through there, but it's not staying and he just can't really figure out why. So after he tries it a couple of times, it doesn't work. He just sets them to the side and then just continues on with his lesson. Like it didn't even happen. And just like him being like, okay, let me assess the situation, try to fix the problem, accept that this is what this is right now. And then moving on with the lesson. Like there are grown adults, people who cannot overcome any sort of resistance or difficulty in if something goes wrong it completely throws them for a loop and I was just so proud of him for assessing it trying to fix it realizing that he was just going to have to accept that it is what it is and then just continuing on with what he needed to do he didn't cry he didn't throw a fit he didn't scream and yell he didn't interrupt everybody else's lesson to be like fix my deal here because I'm the most important thing that's happening he didn't do any of that he just was like, okay, I can't fix it right now. I'm just going to carry on with the rest of what I need to do. And then we'll worry about it after the fact. So I was super proud of him because pretty much that's exactly what I do in my everyday life. (laughs) And um, I showed him afterward. I did show him the little, you know, piece. Hey, if this happens again, this is how you fix this. Um, But yeah, I was just, it was a, it was a proud mom moment for me because he kind of overcame the thing that, that was, went wrong and, and, uh, you know, just made do with what he had, which for most of us in life, I mean, things go wrong all the time, whether it's in card making or, you know, your real life, things that are more serious. Like there's a lot of people who would just be like, well, this didn't go that I want the way I wanted it to. I quit. And he didn't do that. And that just makes me very, very proud of him, which I obviously did express to him. So the swimming lessons seem to be going really well. Why does my child need swim lessons? Well, first of all, I think all children just have swim lessons just because of my line of work. I've seen a lot of things that make me very uncomfortable with kids that don't have swim lessons. So if you have children, please get them swim lessons. It's important. Um, But we bought a pool. So that's why he got swim lessons. Uh, We bought a pool in February and they are going to, Eric actually just went out down there yesterday and they are going to be... um, I guess the way they work is that they deliver it. So they're delivering it in the beginning of May. And then within three weeks of them delivering it, they'll install it. So that way they don't have to commit to anything because of the weird weather in the springtime. So by June, we should have a pool, which is very, very exciting. And I am super extra excited because I had a pool when I was a kid and I loved it. And as an adult, I still do. Let's talk about the card for a minute. So this is my struggle bus card. (sighs) Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This card was a struggle for me. I love the image. 
I think that this border is beautiful. I think it would look great, like I told you earlier, on the bottom, on the top, on the left, on the right. I think it's just a beautiful border. But I tried. <sighs> I tried to not shade it. I tried it to just color it. And it is pretty. Don't like I don't want you to think that I'm saying it's not pretty. Just one layer of color. I did go back because I have no self-control. I did go back and kind of layer two layers where I wanted it to be a little bit darker, but I'm going to be honest with you, it's not super noticeable uh, once it's dry. <laughs> like you guys are seeing it as I'm doing it, so it's wet, so it's slightly more noticeable, but once it's dry, it's like I didn't even really do it. Um, so this is, it's not that it's not pretty. It's just not my style. And I hope that you know the difference. Um, because everybody has a different style. And some people don't love a ton of dimension. And some people just like, um, you know, pretty colors with lots of, you know, imagery to look at. And then they're they're happy with that. I, I am not. I like a lot of dimension. But I tried to keep it simple because I realized not everybody is like me. And that's okay. Different doesn't mean bad. Different just means different. So for this particular one, because there was so much white area at the bottom in between all the pieces parts, I did go in with a B02, um, which is kind of the closest match to that salty ocean uh, when you're using it with a lighter hand, just to fill in those areas so that the card looked finished and not like it had a bunch of white space in it. So those are all of the cards completed. I did decide to stamp and heat emboss all of the images. I have some regrets about this. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you guys, you know what I mean? You, you do what you do. Um, I chose gray because they're spring colors and I want, which did you notice my nail polish is also a spring color. I currently have on coral. I'm very excited about the spring colors and my nail polish coming back for another rotation. But anyway, um, I wanted it to be a little bit softer because it was more spring and so I chose a gray instead of a black where normally I would gravitate towards a black because I that's my preference but I chose a gray and eh, I mean it's meh that's how I feel about it I like it on the one um with all the marker shading where it kind of is dividing up those two images I do like it on that one uh, but the other two, I probably would have just stamped it down in black. Uh, and I may still, honestly, because they're my cards to keep, um, you know, to give away to other people. So I may just kind of like pop off the little, uh, the little um, foam tapes and then just stamp them down in black. But this just gives you, you know, some options um, that maybe you don't normally see here on my channel. I'm just saying because I do the same thing all the time. This is a little trick that you've probably seen me use before. I had some spots that really just did not heat emboss well. And I think it's because I was trying to do too many things at one time. I was, again, being lazy. Um, and so I just take a white gel pen and go back in and fill in what I need to. These are all of the cards together with kind of all of their sentiments laid out. I put foam tape on the back of all of them. But before I put my foam tape on, I wanted to make sure to lay down um, my clear shimmer pen and I did put that on like the insides of the daffodils and the purple portions of the tulips. I didn't get too crazy like with the little um, the little bluebells and stuff in the background um, but I just did that to all of them and then that's it that's the that's all three of the cards. So I hope this gives you some ideas to kind of stretch your stamps and you learned a few things about coloring. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.